We're presented with this question. Can every vector in R4 be written as a linear combination of the columns of matrix A above? Do the columns of A span R4? So we're given A. A is equal to 1, negative 1, 0, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 4, 0, 0, negative 1, 2, 3, 3, 1, negative 8, negative 1. We're asked, do the columns of A span R4? Essentially, these questions are the same. Can every vector in R4 be written as a linear combination of the columns of matrix A above? Do the columns of A span R4? So we need to be aware of this theorem in order for us to be able to figure out if the columns of A span R4. So here's the theorem. Let A be an m by n matrix. And what that means is that it has m rows and n columns. Then the following statements are logically equivalent. The following statements are logically equivalent. This means that if one of these statements is true, all of the statements are true. And if one of the statements is false, then all of the statements are false. All the statements are either all true or all false. All right. Let's look at our theorem. 1. For each b in R m, the equation ax equals b has a solution. So what this means is that if we have any vector in R m, in this case we have a 4 by 4 matrix, so in R4, if we have some vector b, if we have some vector b, if we set ax equal to that, then it must have a solution, and this must work for any b in Rm. 2. Each b in Rm is a linear combination of the columns of A. So each b, is, each b in Rm is a linear combination of the columns of A. This means that if you were to add the columns or multiples of the columns to each other, then you should get back some b. And this has to work for every possible b in Rm. 3. Span of the columns of A equals Rm. What this means is the same thing as number 2. If we were to take the columns of A and we were to take the span or every possible linear combination of those columns, the span of those columns has to be the entire Rm space. And 4, A has a pivot position in every row in every row not every column every row so this is my favorite one to use because it's the easiest one to check but we must be aware of all of these so again do the columns of a span r4 if the columns of a span r4 that's the same thing as asking can every vector in r4 be written as a linear combination of the columns of a it's the same thing as asking can for each b in r in rm can the equation ax equals b ax equals b has a solution and it's the same thing as asking, does A have a pivot position in every row? Now we can check, if we can check for A having a pivot position in every row, then we can prove that all 1, 2, and 3 are actually correct. So all we have to do is prove that A has a pivot position in every row, in every row so we would just have to row reduce it. So we're going to have to row reduce this matrix in order to see if it has a pivot position in every row. So the first thing we could do is we could add row 1 and row 2 and replace row 2 with row 1 plus row 2. So negative 1 plus negative 1 is 0, 3 plus negative 1 is 2, 0 plus negative 1 is negative 1, 3 plus 1 is 4. The next row already has a 0 in the first column so we're good and what we could do to the first row is make the first row have a negative 2 in the pivot column so that we multiply the top row by negative 2 and then we can add this to the final row. So, negative 2 plus 2 is 0, negative 6 plus 0 is negative 6, 0 plus 3 is 3, and negative 6 plus negative 1 is negative 7. All right, so we have the first pivot column completed. That is our first step of row reducing. Now we've got to get to the second pivot column. Remember, in order to find out whether the matrix is whether the matrix has a pivot column in every row, we just want to get this down to echelon form. So before I move on, I want to simplify a few things. So we can uh, scale down the first and third rows to 1, 3, 0, 3, 
1, 3, 0, 3, and 0, negative 2, 1, and 4. And then we have 0, 2, negative 1, and 4. And we have 0, negative 6, 3, and negative 7. Let's keep on doing this. We've got to row reduce this matrix. It'll take a while, but we've got to do it. Now, what we can do is we can get rid of this negative 2 by adding row 2 and row 3 and replacing row 3 with that sum. So let's replace row 3. 0 is going to start off. It's going to start off with 0. 2 plus negative 2 is 0. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. And 4 plus 4 is 8. The bottom row is 0, negative 6, 3, and 7. Now I'm going to change the second row so that it's going to have a positive 6 in the second column. And we'll do that so that the second row is multiplied by 3. So we're going to have a negative 3 and a 12. Top row remains the same, 1, 3, 0, 3. Now we're going to add row 2 and row 4 and replace row 4 with that sum. So what are we going to have? 0 plus 0 is 0. 6 plus negative 6 is 0. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. And 12 plus 7 is 19. And then we're going to have 0, 0, 0, 8. And we can simplify this row again. 0, 2, negative 1, 4. 1, 3, 0, 3. All right. So let's finish row reducing this and check. We can simplify the third and fourth rows by dividing by 8 and dividing by 19. So we're going to have the same thing in both the third and fourth rows. We're going to have 0, 0, 0, 1, and the remaining rows will remain the same. Now to further row reduce this, we could even go as far as replacing row 4 with the difference of row 3 and row 4. So 0 minus 0 is 0, 0 minus 0 is 0, 0 minus 0 is 0, and 1 minus 1 is 0. All right, now we have 0, 0, 0, 1. 0, 2, negative 1, 4, and 1, 3, 0, 3. Now we're going to have to check every row. Does that have a pivot column in every row? This is a pivot position in row 1. This is a pivot position in row 2. This is a pivot position in row 3. But hold on, row 4 has no pivot position. Therefore, therefore, we can say, by the theorem stated earlier, the columns of A do not span R4 and not every vector, not every vector in R4 can be written, can be written as a linear combination of the columns of A.